Hey folks, Ms. Gosling here. In this video, you're going to learn about friction. By the end of the video, you'll be able to solve problems involving friction using the equation that the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. So let's go ahead and get started. And I want to start by introducing friction. So just to remind you, friction is any force that opposes changes or attempted changes to an object's motion. Um, and I do want to specify that friction um, is also going to be parallel to a surface. So between the object and the surface. Um, now, when I say changes or attempted changes to an object's motion, um, what I mean is that frictional forces can make it hard to move an object, but they can also make it hard to start an object moving. So, for example, in this picture, um, you can see um, Barack Obama is trying to um, push this couch. The force of friction can stop him from pushing the couch. And then um, if he is able to start pushing the couch, um, the frictional force will make it harder for him to move it. So he can't just you know, give it one push and let it go. Um, instead, um, with that frictional force, he is actually going to have to continue pushing the couch so that it continues to move. So... That brings us to the equation for friction. So we define the force of friction. Um, and uh, through research, we have found that the force of friction is equal to mu, which is our coefficient of friction, multiplied by the normal force. Now, one thing that's really cool about friction, um, or at least that I think is really cool about friction, is that the coefficient of friction mu is something that's figured out experimentally. So in order to figure out what the coefficient of friction is, we have to actually sit down and do the experiment, rub two things together and see how much friction there is between them. Um, now, one other thing I want to note about uh, the coefficient of friction is that there are actually two coefficients of friction. We have our coefficient of static friction and our coefficient of kinetic friction. Now, as you hopefully can tell from these names, the coefficient of static friction, which is mu sub s, is the coefficient of friction for an object that is not moving. The coefficient of kinetic friction, on the other hand, we use to figure out the force of friction for moving objects. And one fun thing is that the force of kinetic friction is always going to be less than or equal to the force of the, or sorry yeah the coefficient of kinetic friction is always going to be less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction and that is because um, it is always harder to get something moving than it is to keep it moving so think about um, trying to move push a bookcase across the room um, or a table or a chair or anything it's always harder when you're first getting started than it is to keep it going once you've started that that object moving um, so we represent that by having two different coefficients of friction depending on whether the object is moving or not. And I do want to note that the, um, we can find the coefficient of friction for an object, uh, sorry, the coefficient of static friction for an object for looking at the friction, the applied force needed to make it move. So that will be equal. Uh, so the, sorry, the applied force needed to make that object move is going to be equal to the force of friction on that object. Um, and so we can use that number, um, plug that into our FF equals um, mu times the force, the normal force equation, and use that to figure out our coefficient of static friction. So with that, let's go ahead and look at an example problem. When I apply a force of three newtons to a five newton box, the box moves at a constant velocity. What is the coefficient of friction for the box? So the first thing that I can see is that my box is moving at a constant velocity. So that means that the net force acting on the box is zero because it's in equilibrium. Now that I've done that, I am ready to go ahead and draw my free body diagram. So I am applying a force of three newtons to a five newton box. So that means that the Gravitational force on the box is 5 newtons, and my applied force is 3 newtons. And I want to find the coefficient of friction for the box. Um, and I know since the box is in equilibrium, um, there must be a normal force balancing out my gravitational force. 
and that there must be a frictional force in the horizontal direction balancing out my applied force. From here, I can go ahead and make my little table for x and y in the x direction. I have my 3 Newton applied force, so in the positive direction, and I have my frictional force, which is going to be in the negative direction. And when I add those forces together, I should get that the net force in the x direction is zero. Similarly, in the y direction, I have my um, 5 Newton gravitational force, which is pointing down, so it's in the negative direction. And I have my normal force, which is going to be pointing up. And the sum of those forces, again, is going to be zero. Next, what I can do is I can solve in x and y for my frictional force and my normal force. So in the x direction, um, I have positive 3 newtons minus the force of friction equals zero. So what that means is that my frictional force must be negative 3 newtons. In the y direction, I similarly only have two forces, so that means that in the y direction, my normal force must have the same magnitude as my gravitational force, so my normal force must be 5 newtons. Now that I have my frictional force and my normal force, I can solve for my coefficient of friction, since I know that my frictional force is equal to my coefficient of friction mu times the normal force. Now, before I plug in numbers, um, one thing that I do want to caution all of you on, um, the equation that we use that to relate friction and the normal force only tells me about the magnitude of those two forces. It does not tell me the direction. So what that means is that when I'm finding mu, mu is always going to be a positive number. Um, and when I plug in my force of friction and my, my normal force, I want to I wanna get rid of any signifiers of direction. So I don't need to have any positive or negative signs um, for, my, for my frictional force or my normal force um, because I only care about the magnitude, the size of those forces. I don't care about the direction that they're pulling in. So that means that instead of writing negative 3 newtons for my frictional force, I'm just going to write positive 3 newtons because, again, we don't care about, we don't have any direction for our coefficient of friction. It is a directionless quantity, i.e. it's a scalar. So that means that our 3 newtons is equal to mu times our normal force, so mu times 5. Um, and excuse me, I'm going to, and you'll notice I am putting in units here um, because one thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead, I'm going to solve for mu by dividing by 5 newtons. And what I get is that mu is equal to 3 fifths or 0 0.6. And you'll notice I don't have any units after mu. And the reason for that is that the frictional force and the normal force have the exact same unit. Um, so those newtons are going to cancel out, leaving mu to be, um, to have, to have, to be um, unitless. Um, and mu is one of those interesting things in physics, one of the only things in physics that you're going to see where you don't have to give me a unit because it has none. Um, so mu for this problem is 0 0.6. And just to reiterate what I did, um, was I followed all of the rules for solving an angled force problem. So I drew a free body diagram. I, did, I didn't have to break up angled forces, but I would do that if I had to. Um, I summed my forces in X and Y. Um, I, and then what I did was I solved for FF and FN. And then I added an extra step of saying that my frictional force is equal to mu times my normal force to figure out what mu was. Um, so it's kind of at that last step where I brought in my new friction equation. So before I jump into example two, I do want to just introduce to you one new equation. And that is the force that I apply minus my force of friction, which is my net force, my total force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now this is just an expansion of the equation we've already seen before, F net equals MA. Um, I'm just expanding this for the specific situation of a situation where I have an applied force and a frictional force causing my object to accelerate. Um, but because we are specifically looking at friction, I do wanna go ahead and take the time to just introduce you to that equation. 
So in this equation, what I'm saying is that my applied force, the force that I pull with or that I push with, is equal to my frictional force, otherwise known as mu times my normal force. Um, the difference between those two is equal to the mass of my, the object being pushed times its acceleration. So now that we've gone through that equation, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. Um, so Jacques pulls a two kilogram wagon with a force of five newtons. The wagon begins at rest and reaches a speed of four meters per second after two seconds. What is the force of friction on the wagon and the coefficient of friction between the wagon and the ground? Now, let's go ahead and start with part A. Um, so we're asked to find the force of friction. Since I'm being asked to find a force, um, that means I need to start with my Suvat equations. Once I find my acceleration using Suvat, I can use my F net equals MA equation to find the force of friction. But I'm going to be using my expanded version of that equation. So instead of writing F net equals MA, I'm, what I'm going to write is my applied force minus the force of friction is equal to MA. And again, that's just what my net force is, right? Those are the forces making up my total force. Um, but it's a little bit of an easier way to conceptualize some of these frictional problems. So let's take a look at part A and find the force of friction on the wagon. So with my Suvat, I know that my wagon begins at rest, so it has an initial velocity of zero. I know that it has a speed of four meters per second, um, which will be my final velocity after two seconds, my time. And given that this is one of our F equals MA problems, of course, I'm going to be finding acceleration. So I do not care about my displacement S. So using my equation, um, using my kinematics equation, I'm going to use the equation V equals U plus AT, and I'll plug in my numbers for my Suvat. So my final velocity of four, four meters per second is equal to zero plus A times two. Other, in other words, 4 is equal to 2a, since that 0 is going to just disappear, and my acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. So that's the first step of my Suvat. I have found my acceleration. Now I can plug that in to my fa minus ff equals ma equation. And I'm going to go ahead and do that in another color since it's new. So fa minus ff equals mass times acceleration. Um, and the new thing here is now, instead of just finding my acceleration and using that to find my net force, what I'm going to do is find my acceleration and use, use that to find my net force, but combine that with a force that I'm already given to figure out a specific missing force acting on the object. So my 5 newtons is applied force that Jacques is pulling this wagon with. So that 5 newtons is going to go in there as my applied force. I'm trying to find my force of friction so that can stay unknown. I know that my wagon has a mass of two kilograms. And I'm gonna go ahead and label this as F applied. Um, and I know from the previous part of my question that my acceleration is also two. So in other words, five minus the force of friction is equal to four. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add the force of friction to both sides these guys will cancel out. So instead of five minus the force of friction is equal to four, we get five is equal to four plus the force of friction. Subtracting four from both sides, I get that the force of friction is equal to one Newton. And that is my answer for part A. You'll notice I have two key parts of my answer, right? I gave you the number, but I also gave you the unit. And I am gonna expect to see units um, on any question that y'all answer for me. So that's part A. Let's go ahead now and look at part B. And for part B, we're trying to figure out the coefficient of friction between the wagon and the ground. For that question, we are given that our force of friction is one Newton. We know that the mass of our object is two kilograms. Um, and we know that the normal force 
is equal to the force of gravity, which is equal to 2 times 9.8 m times g. Um, and this is because my wagon is sitting on the ground, right? My wagon is rolling across the ground. It is not falling through the earth. Um, and so therefore, force of gravity must equal the normal force. So those are my givens. My unknown is mu, the coefficient of friction. And so I'm going to use the equation. FF equals mu times Fn. The force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. And use that to solve for mu. So my force of friction is 1. Now let me go ahead and just write out my sub and solve step. So my force of friction is 1. And that is equal to mu times my normal force. And again, my normal force is equal to my gravitational force because my wagon is rolling across flat ground and not falling through the earth or floating up into the sky. So that means that my normal force is equal to mg, or 2 times 9.8. Therefore, 1 is equal to mu times 19.6. And mu, uh, dividing both sides by 19.6, I get that mu is equal to 0 0.05. And one thing you'll notice here, guys, is I don't include units, and that's because mu is a unitless quality. Our frictional force and normal force are both measured in newtons, and so mu doesn't need to have any um, units to balance that out. So here is my answer for example two. Um, finally, let's go ahead and look at our takeaways. First, friction always opposes motion or attempted motion. So if I'm pushing on something and it's not moving, friction is still going to oppose that attempted beginning of something moving. Um, secondly, the force of friction is mu times the normal force, where mu is the coefficient of friction between two objects. Um, and I want to remind you that mu is dependent on the makeup, the material of those objects. So, for example, the coefficient of friction between you and ice is very different from the coefficient of friction between you and sand, which is why you slip on ice and you don't slip on sand. Um, so there you have it, guys. This is your introduction to friction. Um, go ahead and try solving some problems on your own. Best of luck and happy solving.